to the mic. That glare's not too bad in your eyes, is it? All right. I'm good. What's happening, you two? You got us both, Lamont and Larry, and we are live. Larry, say something to the people. What's going on, you guys? It's good to see you. It's good to be in the house and uh, just live thing. Yeah, man. And we've got a pretty action-packed show going on for y'all today. We're going to talk a little bit about co another cord cutting service going up in the price. We're going to talk about rest in peace, Nipsey Crazy. Hussle. We're going to talk about Joe Biden. And the thing we're doing on this channel, if you super chat us today, we're going to take your phone calls and we're going to let you go email us or you can go to my Facebook page. So we got to put the number all the way out there for everybody to see. So let's jump on into it. Larry, tell me about <laughs> Nipsey Hussle. What do you know about Nipsey Hussle? Man, I'll tell you, I, I feel bad. I feel bad about dude because he seemed like he was trying to do some positive things in the community. You know, I'm originally from L.A., so, um, you know, it's sad to see brother go out. But, you know, here, here's the reality of this. And okay. this is going to this might sound a little... Uh, might sound a little cold mm -hmm. in, in the in light of everything, but here's the reality: when you make it, when you make it big like he did, when you become a successful artist and you have money, you have fame, you have success, you can't hang out with the same people that you used to. Okay. You do hang out with those people. You can't hang out with those people in the same place that you used to hang out with them. Oh. Did, uh, I understand now, this brother want to. I understand this brother want to serve the community, right? And he wants to do some good works, but it's dangerous when you're when you are a, when you are a gangbanger. You have to get out. I mean, that's just the reality. Of when you're a gangbanger and you get a chance to get out the hood, and you want to live. You need to move. You need to move your business. You need to move your house. You need to move your family. If you can afford to move your friends, take them too. You know, but. And I get you want to support the community, and I and I and I applaud that. But I think sometimes you need to support the community from afar, and that means some maybe have your store, but you don't go there and manage it. You don't go there and work there. You pop in every now and then to check on things. Okay. You know? So we got a comment. Because it's, otherwise, it's just too dangerous. We got a comment from my big homie Frederick Rainey. He said he agree with you. You're right. Uh, now, for those that don't know the story. They found the guy that shot him. His name was Eric Holder. Ironic, huh? The same name as Obama's attorney general. They had some beef prior to him getting shot where Nipsey Hussle told him never to come back to his store again. He gets mad about that. And they have a girl driving the car, runs by, shoot him. Bam. Now the police got him. And the story here is... Nipsey Hussle was beloved in the hood. He wasn't living there per se, but he was trying to do business there. He was trying to uplift the hood. He had a building right. that had, you know, it had a STEM branch. It had a floor for people to live in. It had shops. He was trying to do his best to get back to, back to the hood where it came from. And he was on a whole lot of these committees and boards in the city to get rid of violence. And I commend him for that. You know, a lot. You know, a lot of rappers get their platform. They take off with the platform. They don't do anything back in the hood to try to lift where they came from. And if you've never dealt with nonprofits or dealing with empty government issues, it's hard as hell trying to do a business in a low-income area when you're dealing with the political part, the financial part, and trying to make it work. So I commend him for being able to bring it together. Yeah, and I, and I feel, I do, but I just, you know, I mean, you, say, you see these young dudes that come up and, and they're, they want to hang out, they want to hang out with gangbangers, and I'm not saying this is Nipsey Hussle want to hang out with man. Dude grew up, a, he grew up in the hood, the dude was a rolling 60s crip. I mean, mm. that's like one of the oldest sets in LA, <laughs> and, and. I mean, dude has been out there, and when you're out there like that, I mean, as far as I know, he was he was real. 
yeah. when you're like that, you you just can't stay in the same neighborhood to work, to live, and you might be able to pop up and do some support. You can work from afar, but that's what you have to do. Other people, I want to go and work in the community out there. I could because I'm safe. I'm, I don't have any gang affiliations, but we're and I, and I get it. It's a catch-22. In order to be to get the respect to some of those guys, you get the affiliation. But by having the affiliation, you know, you run the risk of, of, of being killed because you have people that are beefing with you. And you know, when I look at these young dudes now, and I see people like you know, like Chris Brown and 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 uh, what's that other that other cat's name? That Tech Six Nine. Oh, to, I to, see to, these dudes. I can spell his name: Tanaki X X sixty nine three six nine. Whatever the hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see these young dudes want to run around and act like they're gangsters, and I'm thinking and people. You know, when you see people like Chris Brown, who's been a celebrity longer than he has it, like, dude, why want to hang out with this? Why do you want that to be who you're cool with? Not to say that anything with them as the gangsters as individuals, but as a collective. They're they're criminals. That's what they are. They're, they are criminals. Well, let's think I about mean, it. of the gang. Let's, let's and think, it's let's, dangerous for you to be there. Let's think about what they're doing. Some of these people, they wind up becoming what they're trying to portray for entertainment purposes. Like, you know, right. some wrestlers come ring their heel and they don't know how to turn that shit off. They think that they can go to Kmart, get in your face, and try to suplex you. And that happens with a lot of entertainers. By the way, every checking in on us again, if you super chat us and you want to get on the show, you can talk to us about anything that we cover on any of my cha- any of our channels. Fitness, uh, court cutting, money. We're going to be having a segment in a minute where we're talking about our men touching women too much because we're talking about Joe Biden. We are going to get the court cutting, but this is a damn everything show. <laughs> if you want to get in up here, super chat us so we can give you a call with voice right here on the live show. So, Larry, what closing remarks would you have about the nickel issue? I mean, it's a sad thing anytime a young brother gets killed, anytime somebody's out there trying to do good and they get killed. It's sad, especially over something senseless. And, you know, I mean, it's it's just it's frustrating because if this is one of the things that we see happening time and time again. This is not something new. This is, you know, this is uh, I mean, it's gone from it's gone from the original rapper that was a real gangster getting shot up and you know, and that happens. You know, that used to happen very very infrequently. Now it seems to be it's a it's like a social media thing where people go out, they go and they film themselves or they film their crew beating up some rapper, leaving a studio or leaving a club or leaving a store or snatching his chain. And, and then and then they hold the chain hostage because they're like, yeah, you guys claim to be gangsters and hard. And then they want to post photos of themselves on social media wearing dude's chain and acting all hard. And I'm like... I mean, this is it's it's crazy because you have you have dudes that are up there playing with people's lives over social media and playing with people's lives, you know, taking people's lives over nothing. I mean, you have some frivolous beef. I don't I honestly short of somebody attacking my wife or my mother or something. I can't imagine. I can't imagine anything that I would be willing somebody over. I mean, if somebody wants my camera, somebody wants my shirt, my shoes. Look, brother, if you need a phone that bad, don't steal mine. Don't let me don't let me go to jail. Let me, let's just go down to the Apple store together. If you if you're willing to kill for a phone, I'm willing to buy you a phone. You know? Now I do, mean Do you think that this has a lot with you? Because I feel like when you're young, you don't know how fragile life is. You know, as me and you, we're we're above the age of 35. We've seen things. We know we're not invincible. Do you think that these guys just don't realize that death is death is the finale? There's no coming back from that. I think that uh, I'm not so sure. It could be some of that. I think there's some of that where they feel invincible. When you are young, there's, you do feel invincible to a certain extent. But I honestly think that there are certain people that feel like nobody can touch them. Mm-hmm. Like they, 
like some of the celebrities that get out there and they've been, you know, they've been a celebrity for so long or people start to treat them in such a way where they get everything they want. They ask for, they ask for this to happen and that happens. They want this piece of clothing or you know, that uh, clothing. They want this car, that house, everything just happens for them. They want that girl manager calls up and, and arranges for that girl to come by. They mm-hmm. get everything and they start to feel like there's nothing that they, that can touch them. And, and then they get touched. I'm not saying that's what happened with Nipsey Hussle. I'm just saying, I think that's what happens with celebrities in general. They start to feel invincible. And, and then the next thing, you know, they get someone, someone kills them. They get it. They get arrested, and they end up in jail, or they get accused of rape, or so that. If, I think they just need to keep a firm grasp on reality, and some of that has to do with people around them never saying no. Yeah, you know? I understand, man. So, you but know. I think, I think, I think when you, I think when people as celebrities when face some serious, um, when they face some serious, uh, you know. Oh, trials and relations in their younger years of celebrity. I think some of those people, when they get a little, or they they grow a little bit quicker, and they and when they grow up, they seem to grow up into more mature adults. I mean, when you look at someone like Snoop, Snoop was a gangster. Snoop was you know, Snoop was a was a um, was a crip in Long Beach. He got mm-hmm. you know early in his career, he was on trial for murder. Right, and he was he was looking at going to jail for the rest of his life. So group shout out. And, so we got Tim and, Tim saying, what's up, brother Larry and Lamont? Shout out to Tim. He's a follower of both our channels. We've got my big up, homie. We got my big homie Rochelle. Loves us both. He came to check us out. They're giving us All input. Right. We need to get your input. Let us know how you feel so we can talk about the things that's on your mind. Shrink and Sharon follows both of our channel. Hey, Miss Shrink and Sharon. Miss Sharon, you still ain't told us. Shrinking about you. You gave us your name, <laughs> but we don't know. Tell us shrinking. We want to know. And again, if you guys want to get on the show, if you super chat, we'll get you live on the show so everybody can hear your voice. My homie Silverback. What's up, Larry and Lamont? Larry, we've got a lot of people coming in here that want to show us some love. All right. I like that. I like that a lot. So right. Let me just finish up right quick. So all I was saying was Snoop had went through this in his career and he moved away from that life. I mean, it's not like he just abandoned his friends, but moved away from that life. If you notice the way he progressed, he stopped talking so much about being a cripster and he went to more having fun with his music, hanging out with clips and going to Brazil, making fun with, with Brazilian models and then doing you know, when he had his kids, he was he was doing the uh, football league, and yeah. and now he's doing he's now he's a game show host and and doing cooking with Martha Stewart, and you know, and doing this whole Rasta thing with his. I mean, he's 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 moved away from that because he saw how reckless that style is, and how quickly they can someone either the either another person or the, the law can take everything away from you in an instant, and. You know, some people people have that experience, and they they have close calls, and they mm-hmm. and they move away from that. From that, other people they don't get the close call; they get dead. Other people never get the close call, and they keep living reckless until something terrible happens to them. So, uh, it took, for me, it's very sad that we live a place where you're entertained by violence, sex, greed. And some people don't know how to turn that off. Like you said, Snoop Dogg is a good example of being able to turn the entertainment piece off. And he right. figured out a long time ago that he really ain't about that life. Hell, when I first seen the first Snoop album, where he had that girl Han part sticking out that doghouse, I knew he won't about that life. It's fine. I mean, I'm cool with that. You ain't got to be about that life. Who, who, who the hell says you got to be about something to have a good life of your own? Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that. The reason why I'll tell you this is that, you know, when I lived in California, I worked as a, I worked for, for, you know, for the Source Magazine and for Loud Records and Sony Music and Artemis and a number of different labels, and and I spent quite a lot of time with Snoop. 
You oh, know, this, you been, that's new. Quite, quite a lot of times I've been hanging out on, on a on a bus or in a, in a in a trailer, hanging out, shooting photos while they were smoking and drinking, and we all just hung out and talked. And, and um, you know, because I worked with them so many times, they just kind of recognized my face and got used to me being. And Snoop is a real Snoop is a real is a real digger. I mean, he just is. <laughs> I I mean, he is. And I. He's older now. So he's not doing the same crap before, but I wouldn't say I would never say that he wasn't a real gangster. He wasn't a soft dude. Is legit, but he's also smart and knows that he can't do the same things that he you do, and so he was able to move away from that. And I don't think that people who move away from that lifestyle doesn't make them real. It just makes them smart. You know, mm -hmm. it just makes them smart. I mean, if you grew up poor and all of a sudden you work on Wall Street. Moving away from your poor, your poor mentality doesn't make you doesn't make you weak. It doesn't mean that you don't understand where you come from. You don't want to be poor anymore. Well, it's like I said, you ain't you, know, you ain't about that life no more, and you be about that right. life. Um, damn the life! You're trying right. to have your own life of prosperity, and uh, who wants to right. worry about the the what happens to a lot of people in the hood? It's either death or jail. So we'll move yeah. right along I mean, on that one. We'll move the next up. Let, let me just make this one last point. Go for it. Let me just want to make this this one last point. And you touched on it a little. Bit. And that is in every other genre of entertainment, mm -hmm. no one expects the artist to live the life that they portray through their art. You don't expect you, we don't expect Sylvester Stallone to run around with a with a machine gun playing Rambo. You know, we don't expect, we don't expect, uh, um, you know, we don't expect any, you know, uh, what's his name played uh, Killmonger. We don't expect him to run around with his, with his chest all, all uh, potted up, scarred up and, and killing people at random. You know, we don't expect, we don't expect, uh, you know, what's her name to be Wonder Woman. We just, I mean, hey, I, want, that people I want her ass to be Wonder Woman. What you talking about? I want her to be Wonder Woman. Come right on <laughs> off that stage and be Wonder Woman. Damn it. I want her to be Wonder Woman. I don't care what you say. I feel you on that. She is hot. I'll give her that. She is blazing. But my, my point my point remains that I think that people need to learn to accept the art and the artist and know that that people have, you know, they have their life. And I understand that people want to say, oh, I'm keeping it real. Okay. Maybe you, maybe this was you and the past i mean like 50 cent dude got shot like nine times the game was shot like seven times you know oh, yeah you could have lived that life in the past and you were a gangster who got shot up but you that anymore mm -hmm. you know you right. can still you can still talk about your past and your trials and tribulations without having to go and try and continue to live that life because that life will get you killed because the more they have more that you have to lose is also more that someone has to take someone wants to take from you, right. whether because they're jealous and they just want you not to have it, or because they actually physically want it. I'm Anyways, I'm I know I rambled on about it. So you know, good. I mean, I used to, I used to work in the music industry, so I'm passionate when people start talking about hip hop stuff and the violence because I hate seeing it. it. It frustrates me to see some of my my favorite artists go out like that, and I hate seeing these dudes thinking that that being a gangster and a, and a crip or a blood or whatever else or, is cool. cool. It's something that a lot of people do as a necessity. It's not something that I think most people want their kids to do. So right, and I'm gonna get us. I'm gonna get us off this subject by reading what some of our commenters are posting. They're posting great comments. So real quick, right. Mike Earl, once you are in the public's eye, you have to respect the boundaries. Go past that, and the consequences could be great. You just touched on that one, Larry. My big homie, Mike. I agree. What a lot of people don't understand is that the record labels, a lot of the time, these young brothers push to that lifestyle or push that image. Yeah, we we mean that they push you on that image, but you can't be taking that image yes. home with you. My man, one right. in Cleveland, haters gonna hate, which is why we can't have nice things. So I've learned you're gonna have those haters because hell, don't know. Have y'all seen some of my hate? Come on, start reading them for y'all. I'm gonna start reading some of my hate mail. So, y'all, you need let the haters be accolades. When people hate on you, 
that is a sign you are, you 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 crossing glory. You have reached glory. So let them do that. And last one I'm gonna grab is Shrink and Sharon at Lamont and Larry. We think about Nick Cannon doing the documentary. I think that anything can highlight the legacy of what Nipsey Hussle was doing created a positive image for the hood, for everybody, not just for the hood, but a little in the hood to be touched. He should go ahead and do it. So, and we're going to pivot that I mean, one. You know, I, I'm happy that, I'm happy that uh, Nick Cannon's actually doing this. Nick Cannon is one yeah. that he's like, I don't want to say he's quietly doing stuff because he's obviously out there, but he's one of those brothers that's just doing quite a bit. And he doesn't always talk about everything that he does. He just kind of does stuff and puts his name on it. Right. And then right. people, are, oh, damn, he did that? You know, I mean, but the dude's got like 19 jobs. He works like a Jamaican. And he gets stuff done. He's, hey, he's hey, like, uh, hey, man, you, you damn racist talking about he worked like Macon. What? The, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> God, so people. Yeah, the man, got, the, man, the man got more jobs than Hustle Man from Mark. Yeah, I get it. But he's doing his thing. <laughs> he's doing his thing. He is. Yeah. So now we got to talk about late. We need Shrink and Sharon for this one. She's still in here listening, Larry. Shrink and Sharon and all, all the right. ladies following this particular live stream. Are men doing too much touchy of women when it's not warranted? And we're talking about Joe Biden. So this Joe Biden, the former vice president under Barack Obama, has a not that he's running for office yet, but you can see it in the rumblings. And a Democrat lady who also snitched on Bernie Sanders has said that he took her hair and she didn't like it. And then another lady came out and said that he grabbed her by the back of the neck and rubbed noses with her like Rudolph the Red Nose Reader. Now, we want to know what you guys think. <laughs> We want you guys think we want like to, Rudolph. Yeah, like Rudolph, the red nosed reindeer. Uh, we want to know what you guys think about this whole subject of men and women getting into each other's personal space. When is it appropriate? When is it not? And since Larry went on the first number going, through, I look at it just like this. Some of this, I think, is coming out now um, for the simple fact that he's thinking about running. Because you always kind of question why didn't some of these people say these things when it happened. And it could have been that the Me Too wasn't cracking. It could have been that you felt like he was too powerful. Nothing would happen. And I ladies confer with that. But it could have also just been that you didn't care at the moment. It wasn't a big deal. And now you're bringing it up because this is your moment to shine. But at the same time, what is the boundary? Because I feel like if a woman likes you married, no matter what her where she's at in life, if a woman wants to touch her, and and we're talking about what Joe Biden did, sniff hair or just, they're not going to be that mad at you to the point where it's going to hold you up. And if a woman don't want you to touch her, she's going to let you have it the minute you even try to walk in her interpersonal space. But we want to know what you guys think. Shrink and Sharon said, don't forget to share a like. Don't forget to do that. Shrink and Sharon also said, that lady is a cloud chaser. Larry, give me your thoughts and opinion on what's going on with Joe Biden sniffing hair and rubbing noses like. All right, so this is, this is my thought on this, right? I don't think that, I don't think this is anything that is specific to women when it comes to Joe Biden. And the reason why I say this, I was having this conversation all night and, and I was saying that Joe Biden is not, I mean, he, it's not that he doesn't do it with women, but he does it with everybody. Joe Biden and his, you know, touchiness and, and, and the way he hugs people and whispers in people's ears. Joe Biden is the equivalent of a close talker when it comes to that stuff. He's very, he's very tactile and affectionate with people. It's like those, it's like when you, you, when you have somebody in the office and that person is a close talker, they get right up in your face mm -hmm. and they're two inches from you talking and you're like, you want them to back up a little bit or you back up a little bit. And 
Yeah, they make you a little bit uncomfortable, but is it inappropriate? I mean, it's all, you're a little uncomfortable because it's a little bit into your personal space, but it's not like they're doing anything to you that is sexually inappropriate or or anything. I mean, the dude touches, the dude touches little kids. He, you know, I was watching a video last night during the inauguration and when he over there and gave this little boy a hug and held him for a minute. Another one in the White House where he where he would hold some little girl's head and then kissed her on the head. Another one where where he's basically holding Obama and kissing him. And and I mean, if you just people focus on the fact that that he's done this to women, but if you look it up, that's the way he interacts with humanity as a whole. It's not just women. That's just the way Joe Biden interacts with people. So the, as true as that might be. That's Joe Biden. That's not the people. You know, I wouldn't want Joe Biden to come grab me by my neck and rub his damn nose on me. I don't give a damn. He'd be Gandhi. I don't want him in my space. And I think it comes down to a point of, as a human being, have to also set a boundary for no matter who the person is. Now, I always see them talking about politicians, you know, shaking hands and kissing babies, right? And them people, when they when the politician kissed the baby, them people offer the baby up there. You know what I'm saying? If right. if like somebody Simba. if somebody gets in your personal space, I think no matter you a man, woman, whatever, you have to tell them, bro, I don't like people in my space like that. Because if you keep letting them get into the space, they're gonna assume that you're okay with it. And I think you that everybody but if, but if they don't say anything, then who's to blame? If somebody if somebody feels that that two inches versus six inches is the appropriate uh, amount of to be from someone, then and you don't say anything to them, then who's to really blame? Is it they to blame for your uncomfortableness, or is it that your lack of assertiveness that that's the blame? Like, you know? That's what I'm saying. Because I told you, plenty you of people, you know, back up off me. I need a little bit more space. Exactly. Sometimes I don't really care. Exactly. Now let me let me read some of the comments. So Art Brantley, my homie. Some of this story is nine years old. Why now? Follow the money. Is she being paid? Good thought. Cynical. What's up, my big homie? Um, Silverback said in your first item what he was trying to say. Shrink and Sharon. Joe Biden has to apologize to Anita Hill and stop touching. And he still should run for president. He should run for president. But he he is going to have. I'm with Shrink and Sharon. Look, he is he should run for president. <laughs> he is going to have to stop all this feeling. This is the Me Too era. Everybody don't want him touching them. And I think some of us kind of feel like, well, damn, Trump has been caught cheating on his wife using campaign money to pay a porn star. No, how about this? Trump got caught cheating on wife with his wife. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, and and so you're 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 gonna try to have Biden on stage with Trump. And if that was something to come up, is that really a fight Trump to go down? You sniffed hair, you rubbed the sweat off some woman's nose compared to what Trump did. Well, no, but and I and I think maybe that's one of the reasons why Democrats are a little leery about Biden on some level is because they know, for one, that if, if Biden is is the prime is the uh, is the nominee, well, that I mean, on one end, it takes the whole it takes the whole Me Too Me Too movement somewhat off the table because you can't really talk about the whole Me Too movement if you're trying to say, okay, well, we're going to attack. We're going to attack uh, Donald Trump over his uh, his behaviors, but then we have nothing to say about Joe Biden, even though they're, they're not they're they're false equivalency. Because Joe That's Biden true. just seems to be an That's affectionate true. person, and what I really just find his behavior is just akin to a close talker, versus you know Donald, who's actually sexually assaulted people and you know and admitted to doing so. So. There are false equivalencies, but the but the media and and the public's probably not going to see it that way. So they're not going to really be able to talk about the whole Me Too thing with the same level of, of you know authority if Joe Biden is a nominee. 
And I think that's those agendas they really want to push. And it's just it's it's not going to have the same effectiveness if he's the he's the uh, nominee. Let me and read. I you. think also it's probably. I mean, my personal opinion. I think it's probably one of the candidates out there who's afraid of that that of Joe Biden because he is such a threat to all the people in the race right now. That's I, true. I think that I wouldn't be surprised if I found out some one of these one of these women or both of these women have come out are working with one of these campaigns to try and uh, to try and take him off the board before he gets on the, gets in the game. Let me read you the comments. Um, Art Brantley, me too selected for it weren't the case. Why is Trump in office? Uh, that's a good one. And Silverback, every eight years, people are so sick of each party. That's how Trump got in. All right, let, let's let's address the selectiveness Me Too. Larry, what are your comments on Me Too being selected? Oh, one more comment before you make that comment. 351 Cleveland. Okay. I've seen much work hugging, touching, and kissing at the church. Damn. Tato, be more careful. Boy, he done went to church. <laughs> he, boy, this man done said he done seen women walking to church with the fall out and they don't seem pastors grabbing booties and talk about this in the name of Jesus. Got to be more Lord, Lord. <laughs> Ooh, woo. Mm -mm. Damn. Oh man. So I mean you will see some stuff in the church. There's no, no doubt. I guess but, it, I it, mean the church is a social circle like anything else. So you're gonna see you're gonna see the entire gamut. You better so. believe that. And so um I think this is a good pivot point to go to the cord cutting. A lot of these followers are cord cutters. All right. Yeah, we'll wrap that up. And folks, continue to leave us comments. Continue to chat here. We'll be doing this on a weekly basis. This is going to be a free ball. We'll set the narrative and you guys take over the conversation. So now let's get on cord cutting. So we've got another cord cutting service that has decided to go up. FUBU TV. Going up ten yeah. more dollars, bringing them to about fifty. But the one thing that they done do from the other services is that they're going to be offering more channels to their service and not taking it away. So what we want to know from you guys, and we'll let comment is, how are you starting to feel about cord cutting above ground? Fubu TV, and and Shrink and Sharon got a comment in here. She said Netflix is going up too. To say. Mm -hmm. She said Netflix is going up as well. Services are going up. I've done a video last week about all most of your cord cutting services are going up. How are you guys feeling about all these above ground services? Now that they don't got you, they don't got you to cut the cord. You know what I'm saying? They don't teased you. They don't took off that top shirt. And know you fully invested. <laughs> they, now they want you to give up all the good, take your pants off. They want you to do the whole nine. How are you all feeling about above ground cord cutting? Larry, give us your opinions. I collect. Well, my opinion is at this point is it's so expensive to do the above ground cord cutting that it's really just not worth it. Yeah, I mean, man. if you're talking about, <sighs> if you're talking about Paying, um, you know, FUBU or DirecTV or someone fifty a month, and you still have to make sure that you have high enough uh, act. You know, you have high net, high speed uh, internet with speeds fast enough to support live stream. You know, HD live streaming. You're gonna, you're probably paying at least at least another fifty bucks a month, if not more, for internet access. So if you're talking about a hundred bucks a month, you might as well just get cable. I mean, exactly. That's just the reality of it. If you look online, uh, most of the major uh, cable companies at Cox, you know, uh, Xfinity, um, what is it, AT&T, and mm -hmm. Verizon, all the other ones, for around 100 bucks, you can get high-speed internet. You can get around like 50, 50 megabits down, like maybe five up, and then you can get, you know, I don't know, maybe like 150 channels, 120 channels. Right, the month. I mean, I mean, really, if you're talking about paying 100 bucks a month, instead of getting one of these services where they say, "Okay, we're going to give you 40 channels, or we're going to give you 60 channels," well, you might as well go ahead and just get your cable and your internet all wrapped up in there, pay a little less 
money and you still get the benefits of having one, everything in one package. You get access to all the apps, you log in all, to all the apps, so you can watch them on your mobile devices, your computers. And I mean, they basically they've made it, they made, they don't want you, the, the cable companies don't want you to cut. The cable. Mm-hmm. That's bottom, that's bottom line. What it is, they don't want you to cut the cable. And so, and since this poor cutting thing has become very trendy, they're basically trying to say, okay, yeah, go ahead, cut the cable. But if you cable experience, you're going to end up paying the same or more. And in downright, and they ridiculous. know this, so that's what, they're, and, and that's what they're doing. They're just saying, okay, cool, we'll just make it so we still make the same amount of money. It's just going to be on a different product. Yeah, it's um, it's ridiculous. Tim wins. He's back. Tim, right now we're talking about how every cord cutting service that's above service is going up. Jump in when you're ready. Let us know what you think. And like Larry was saying, it's gotten to a point where above ground core cutting, you might as well have damn cable. Shrink and Shan said they're trying to be cable. And I think one of the issues that they're trying to do now is they're just trying to capitalize on core cutting movement because, you know, a lot of people have been scared out of doing underground cord cutting just simply because YouTube has put a whole lot of pressure on us YouTubers not to talk about it anymore. And the reason we've got that pressure is because the, the cabal, the MPOA, has chased them and saying, look, we're going to have people cut revenue from you, so you need to shut these people up or you need to monetize them. And so now that they're starting to corral that group, they're starting to have – um, I even heard they've got like these secret underground nerds who are looking for these various different avenues, whether it's YouTube or on the web, how people can get under stuff and they're reporting it. These people are starting to stick their chest out now. They feel like go for the gusto and they're starting to try to make cord cutters pay. Yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's unfortunate, but you know, they, they want to hold on to this old antiquated bid model. And so they are, they're trying to force people in and, you know, they're trying to, to get rid of people that can college and then they're trying to make it so expensive. But all that's really going to happen is, is that they are going to, they are going to cause people to simply go underground when you make it to the, when you, I mean, most people that cut the quarter doing it because it just costs too much money. And so look, Larry, out. when you have to pay 200 bucks a month to get all the channels you want, or you can go onto a TV service, and get the same service for 15 bucks a month, people are going to pay 15 bucks a month. And so if you don't give people a reasonable, if you don't give people a reasonable service at a reasonable, you will find a way to get that service. Right. And, I mean, we saw it happen with music. It was like, it was a free for all for the longest time where people were like, F these big companies, don't care if they don't, if they don't make any money, screw them. And people were downloading like crazy. I mean, even Napster and, and, and Bear Share and LimeWire and all these other uh, certain people were downloading like crazy, and then finally they were just like the the record. It seemed like the record uh, labels in the music industry finally realized what was happening. Like we just can't do this. We need to offer real alternative. Well, now yeah, twenty bucks a month. I mean, or ten bucks a month to have Apple Music or Spotify or 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 Tidal or something like that. You all the music you could possibly listen to. Now, right. yeah, you don't own it. You can only listen to it. But most people don't care. Most people don't care if, if, if uh, you know, if a year from now they can't listen to last year's album. Right. You know? Let me let so, me get in. Let me sneak I mean, in uh, some of the some of their comments. So, Tim Lamont, I cut the cable cord thirteen years ago. Learn my from those damn crook, crooks direct TV. <laughs> My man called the crooks. <laughs> well, he's right, too. They was crook. Um, let's see. A shrinking share. It's sad that your channel can get shut down. Content, showing content on YouTube, but not Nipsey murder on YouTube. I agree. Art Bramley, I cut the cord yeah. two years plus and cut happier. I'm trying to put people down with the movement. Cable is a ripoff. Damn right. And before he cut the cord, he threw up an antenna, and he was completely happy. Loyalty barely joined, but who is Nipsey Hustle? Let me Nipsey Hustle was a, a young rapper who was doing big things in the community out in LA. 
and it was pretty bittersweet for him to get shot. I didn't know who he was either because I don't listen to hip hop from this era. I listen to the 90s hip hop. But he was like a hip hop legend, an underground, above ground legend. And now he's dead. Rest in peace. He did a lot for the community. Miss Jones, hi, everyone. So true, Miss Sharon. It's sad how it's ever. Oh, it's Nipsey Hustle, not so. Okay, my bad. Hey, Biggie Smalls, <laughs> Biggie Tall. Bad. So we've, we're still talking about cord cutting. Um, yeah. So for you guys that are up here now that have been enjoying anything underground, what have you seen or what have you experimented with has been your favorite underground service in terms of cord cutting? I know a lot of you guys like gear. I know a lot of you guys like Nitro IPTV. But I think one that people overlook is Streams TV. Um, they do a really, really good job. You get pretty much every one for like 18 bucks. I like uh, I like Magic TV. Oh, Magic TV. I've never heard of that one. What's up with Magic TV? Silverback said he likes Eternal. Which one? I, I didn't catch that. Eternal TV. Eternal TV. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, there's a couple of them that I, that I like. I mean, there's a... Um, there's a service that's really nice that's called uh, Cheese TV, and I really like their service, but I just don't like the interface of their app, but I like their service a lot. It's, and that's Cheese TV. Magic TV is probably my favorite one, and um, they, they are they use the same um, they use the same platform or same back, back, backbone that Set TV used to use, mm -hmm. except now they have you know more channels. And, uh, I think it's it's more stable, and uh, it, it's a really really nice service. It's, it's more expensive, and I shouldn't say it. it's not expensive. It's twenty five bucks a month. You get four devices, and so um, you know. But it's 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 nice. And for people that like Set TV, it's a lot like that. Like if you like Set TV, you will like Magic TV. And, wow, uh, I've had for about uh, I don't know maybe six eight months or something. Never had a problem with them. Check this out. So, so I've asked everybody what they're using. Silverback Shrink and Sharon. They use Eternal. Silverback says nobody can beat three lines for eight dollars. Never down. Damn. My big homie Tim. Eight dollars? Wow. Eight, hey, that's three dollars more than a five dollar foot long at Subway. My homie, um, <laughs> my homie Tim said he used Avengers IPT. TV. I don't know how Marvel fan I am. Y'all see behind me. Sharon said, I get five lines for $10. So for two $5 foot longs, Sharon getting five lines. Hey, Sharon, um, can I be one of your kids? <laughs> Jermaine Young says, Obey TV. Man, damn, how many services is out there? Everybody getting paid. Yeah, that's that's a lot. Everybody getting paid. Let's see I'll tell you here. another one is um is <coughs> excuse me is IPT Flex. That one is a really nice service. I mean those those dudes are on top of game. I don't think I've ever had any downtime with them. Service is on point. They are yeah they are they are they are straight up legit. I like that service a lot. That's that's one of my so okay like probably them yeah. I mean I have like. I think I have like four active services now. Not that I need all four, but right. the ones that I use the most is mo is like Magic TV and, and IPTV Flex. And Magic TV I use mostly because they have a, a, a app that you can you download the Soul Player app and you can put it on your Apple TV like you use most of the time. Okay. So, you, I, I know like you guys are probably booing me like, oh, I use a useful TV and not a Fire TV. So I have both, but so I like my Apple TV. Silverback told me to Larry. He wants to know your top three IPTVs. Underground. My top three? Top three. Underground. 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 All right. My top three underground is going to have to be Magic TV. Magic. Okay. And then it's going to be Magic TV. Then it's going to be IPTV Flash. IPTV Flash. 
the third one, man, is sort of a tie between like reality reality uh, TV and uh, like reality reality IP and cheese TV. Okay, I like cheese okay. TV service a lot. I just don't like their I just like their uh, their app. I don't like their interface of their app, but the service is really good, which is ultimately what you want. Okay, you know? so this is what I want to yeah. know from the people. Has you know my home there. Um, my homie, uh, um, Solo Man, he's got one. I think his TV. Has anybody tried Shack TV? And while we while we in this little intermission, shout out my folks, Superdale up in Detroit, my folk Bo, my folk Audio, who now has a file link code. If y'all not rocking with them, which I'm sure all y'all familiar with those guys, go show all them some love. I might be sneaking up to Detroit to see folk. Super Dale at some point in time. Love that brother. You know, I'm curious to know if, if anybody on here uh, go uses uh, D2. Some of us have talked about posting our stuff to D2. If any of the if any of the people out here access it. Well, that's a good question. Okay, Seneca Douglas told me that Chat TV was right Seneca in the house. Yeah, man. Yeah, okay. I him the other day, he would keep popped into my live stream. All okay. Right? Silver, Anyways, go ahead. I'm sorry. Silverback asked, he missed your number two. His number two was IPTV Flex. You know, like you flex those cuts for the sluts. IPTV Flex was his number two. Yep. So, there were some good ones, man. Um, yeah. Uh oh, Sharon about to take us to a different direction, Larry. You you want to follow this young lady? Uh -oh. down? She just said at Lamont, uh -oh. I finally watched the movie Us three times. Good. I told y'all. Look, y'all got to trust me. Look, I diversify my channel and I'll make sure I deliver y'all good. Y'all got to trust me when I do these movie reviews. I'm going to give y'all a hint. It's either decently good it or it's decently bad. I don't be lying to y'all on these movie reviews because time is money. <laughs> time is money. And y'all ain't got all day to be wasting your damn time. I let y'all know whether you should stream at home or get catch that theater being. Yes. Yeah, I want to, but I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Scary movie scary out of me. <laughs> So I don't really want a whole lot of scary movies. Check, but well, back to I'm, Sharon. I, I'm gonna watch you because I like Jordan Peele and I want to support my brother. It looks like a really good movie. So I'm I'm gonna watch it, but you know, I have I'll be. so Sharon says Superdale wanted you to do the review with us last weekend. <laughs> oh, so um I, I saw the movie before it cut it came out. I usually see a lot of these movies before they come out. And I try to give y'all a movie review without spoiling it. But what I'm going to start doing is doing a non-spoiler review before the movie comes out. And then I'll do a spoiler review where I might start squatting up with other YouTubers to talk about it because things are fun. And one thing that we've got to do as YouTubers, you've got to diversify your content. You know, especially now that they're really not wanting you to talk about below ground cord cutting, which is what gets a lot of views. You've got to kind of diversify content. Um, yeah, us what us was more of um what first scary. Um like I said, some of it was just cliche to be honest. Y'all didn't check out my us non-spoiler review. Go check it out. Let me know if you think I'm on point. But some good movies coming out this month and y'all know I'm so pumped. Uh Vin Endgame. Avengers Endgame is coming out. But there's a movie that's coming yeah. out too, Larry, that I don't want y'all to overlook. It stars the girl is on Blackish. The daughter, the youngest daughter. Yeah, that's that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that comes out next week. And uh, my wife wants to go see it. I think I'm on it because that young lady, she's very talented. And she actually helped produce the movie. Yeah, she's the youngest executive producer, apparently, in Hollywood. Right, right, right. So that's one that I'm kind of watching out for. 
But I want you guys to tell us what you guys like to watch. What type of genres? What type of movies are you looking forward to? And who's got some predictions on what they think is going to happen in uh, Avengers Endgame? Larry, get into the, the Marvel movies at all? I do. I do. I'll tell you, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I love I love these uh, these internet theories where people are talking Ant Man's going to crawl up Thanos' butt and then re expand. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Lord. <laughs> I love these theories. They're hilarious. Oh, my God. Lord. So, Sharon was I'll saying. You, I... go, ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead. I have a question. Mm -hmm. The Disney merger has gone through. I'm curious about how people feel about a possible, uh, uh, a possible Marvel DC universe sort of, uh, you know, cross thing happening. You know, about blending the two universes together. That's a good question. Before we see that, I think we'll see He Man crossover with DC because you know that's a that's a comic book story art too. And it would be a lot easier for Warner Brothers and Sony to team up than I think it would be Marvel to try to do something with Warner Brothers. Because, I mean, right now, there's a lot of beef behind the scenes between those fashions, especially with Marvel just running away with all the money in the theater. Uh, we'll yeah, see. They made it's, some good movies. It's going to happen. But I think before that happens, we'll stand a bigger chance of seeing somebody like G.I. Joe crossing over with Marvel or DC or Thundercats crossing over with you Marvel. So? Oh, oh God. Yeah. That's going to happen. We definitely might see He-Man. I want to know. Go for it. I want to know when we're see the Wonder Twins. Man, I don't know about that one, bro. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the George. Wonder Twin powers. Man. Activate. <laughs> uh, bro. <laughs> I don't know about that one, man. <laughs> <laughs> it, it might happen. It might happen. Oh, so let's see. Joe well, said, yeah, Endgame going to be good. I think they not dead. Teleport somewhere else. Maybe. Well, I hope so. So if y'all haven't been watching some of those theories, I've been getting into the Marvel theories. So I've been getting a little bit more of the Marvel lovers follow my channel. And I've been exercising my talent for editing and trying to put together some storylines about what I think is going to happen. Um, 351 Cleveland says, do you think Gamora is really dead? You know, she died before the snap, and there was a rumor that if you died before the snap, you might really be dead. So I would hate to see her be gone, but they said if you died before the snap, you possibly could be dead. I hope they bring her back because I love that green woman. That's my favorite green women to look at. So I hope they didn't kill her, but we'll just have to see. You might have that Captain Kirk syndrome. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. What, what are you trying to say? You, you, are you trying to say that when I get aroused by a woman, it's not the head below my waist, it's my ears that get bigger? What are you going to say? <laughs> Golly, <laughs> I, brother, get right with y'all up in this piece. <laughs> but, oh man! But yeah, man. So Great craziness. So we'll get. What ready. else are they saying over there? Um, that's pretty much it for now. Um, you know, they this group here is really, really good. I just can't say enough thank yous to the people that are in here watching live. They chat with each other. They plot. They plot to get the knowledge. They plot to make these some good shows. So I'm very thankful to everybody that's come and that's out live. Me and Larry have decided we're going to do live pretty much every Wednesday around 3. And for those of you that love to share our content and talk and go on other people's lives, let them know when you super chat with us. You can get a phone call and be live so everybody can hear your voice, your opinion, and we'll cover anything that we cover on any of our channels every Wednesday at 3 p.m. live. And we might try to do another day if we can get that into our schedule because we know 3 p.m. is kind of early for a lot of people. 
So we might, me and Larry might right. sit around and figure out what's another day that you all have time Try to get and get on it a little bit later or something. Exactly, exactly. So if that's it, yeah. man, if you got anything else, Larry, you want to get off your chest, you know, and I'm about this time when I talk you to you. You know me, I you know me, I could yap all day and well, well I, I've had some I've had some uh some marathon live streams on my channel because people start asking questions and the next thing I know I just can't shut up and yeah. I, I look up and it's been two and a half hours so well, give, don't give, ask me if I have anything else to say. Well <laughs> you know, give give us one more time because you know um usually around this time of the day I go run. I know I'm getting my cuts for the sluts for summertime coming on. Change changing real nice this year, better than it has in all my other years. So at about 4:30, I have to go and get my two mile sprint in. But um, thank you, Miss Sharon. You know, we, me and Larry, are grateful to have you, G Torres, 351 Cleveland, all y'all. Larry, give us one more subject, yeah. then we'll get out of here. Yeah. All right. Should we do should we do something light or something political or some tech worthy or you know? Um hmm. here, I, have a, I, have a, I, I have a question for uh I have a question for people out there that and, and I know a lot of I know a lot of folks uh at least on my channel seem to be um Android users, so I don't I don't know your folks, but I'm curious to know how people feel about this new streaming service Apple. Oh. And I, I think are I they can... willing to pay for another service? They haven't said how much it's gonna cost, but they did they did get a lot of heavyweights out there like Oprah mm -hmm. and uh Jason Moma and Alfred Alfred Woodward Woodard and um you know what's what's her name for Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. I mean they brought out <laughs> Hollywood Heavyweights out there. <laughs> Silver, Silverback said it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, huh? <laughs> oh, <laughs> bro. And, and look, I, Larry, I could ask the question for you. These cats here, are, these cats up here, Silverback, Seneca, Shrink and Sharon, they are smart, savvy. People with their money they just follow me for the cork, and they follow me for the money saving tip. Look, they go underground. They ain't try to hear none of this Apple shit. That's my first curse word of the day, too. <laughs> Trying to hear none of that mess, man. They don't want to hear about the Apple mess. And Sharon says she's an Android girl anyway. <laughs> <laughs> G Torres, Android. <laughs> I'm not sure that Apple's not going to bring it over to Android because they did say they're going to bring that experience over to um, to smart TVs. Some smart TVs that they mentioned uh, run Android. Oh, they you know? do. So, okay. like, they mentioned, I think they mentioned Sony on that list. I think they mentioned Sony and LG, which I think both run Android TV smart TVs. So, I wouldn't be surprised to see Apple uh, run TV service on all platforms. Well, the thing so it, 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 I, I, don't, I don't know, man, because Apple, Apple knows that they charge people five times what they should be charging people. Apple is full aware of that. Apple knows that they tend to be for a higher financial grade class of people who's willing to pay those economical fees to basically get something that they could get on Android. And they know that. So I think more so their business model is based on just taking more money from the people that they I'm not already. Sure if you're making me feel good or bad now, man, I, I, I'm like fully appled up around here. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. I told you how I am. I have people who can see that you are on screen on a on a Mac computer, but that's all I got. My phone, right. uh, my tablets, and all the other stuff is Android. But in terms of a computer, and you know how I do my finances, I found something that's very rare to find with Apple. I found discounts, and I got stuff refurbished. So this computer normally costs you $1,400. I got mine for eight, and that's all I'm willing to give them. That's it. 
Uh, hell, I give him a smile. But that was about it. Yeah, mine was a little bit more than that. I yeah. You know, I so, mean, I, I edited a lot, so I wanted to make sure my stuff was was easy to edit. I, I spent a pretty penny on mine, so. And see, for you and you me know. both, it was a business. But every everybody ain't trying to use Apple for business purposes. And a lot of the people right. that they've got. Yeah, that's true. I get that. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people. I get that, that. A lot of people that use that stuff, they're using it, you know, for leisure. And let me. Silverback says Apple. I'll is, tell you. Hey, Silverback says Apple is but mostly for young people and kids. You're not cool if you don't have Apple. And you know what the weird thing is about that comment, Silverback, is that do you remember when you was young? When I was, Larry was young, even in the damn hood, you was not cool picked on if your ass didn't have Air Jordans. That's what <laughs> Apple had for young people. If you don't have Apple, your ass ain't cool. And I, re I refute the notion because being cool is a standard you should be able to set on your damn own, no matter what technical equipment you have, no matter what shoes you wear. But I get his point, though. Right, I definitely. You know, it's funny because when when I was young, I mean, people do rock the Air Jordans, and uh, I was one of those. I was one of those kids that didn't like to put the crowd every, everywhere. So, right, I used to wear a lot of Vans. You know, mm -hmm. I would wear. Uh, I used to rock my shell top Adidas. You know, people would say, "Why don't you get some Jordans?" Because you have. Them. Oh wow! <laughs> I yeah. used to tell people that used to piss them off. Why you have? Why don't you get some Jordans? Because you have. Look, you know. Here, here's the other one. Like, I want to be like you. Silverback is saying back in the day, they going oh, you didn't have Polo, Azad, Nike, and let me add to that too, Nautica, Tommy Hill figure, them alligator T-shirts, um, th those those um, what is it, those pro player coats? I had one of them, and all the stuff that my mama got me, she got it from the flea market. It won't real. But she got it from the flea market, and the kids ain't know it won't real. But damn it, you know, it kept it kept the bullying down. And like Seneca oh, Douglas man. said, by spending all that money on Apple, you're gonna want to take a bite into the Apple logo too. Damn right. Yep. Silverback. <laughs> I have a starter jacket. I sure did. But take the S off. It was tartar. It wasn't starter. It was tartar. But I made it look like starter. I had one of them too, so definitely, man. Yeah, well, I didn't have a jacket. I mean, people used to rock them. I used to think it was silly because I used to see people out wearing those big ass, you know, heavy Raiders jackets and Raiders starter jackets. And I lived in California. I was like, why are you wearing a starter jacket when it's ninety degrees out? Oh my You're god! Walking around sweating, stinking. Oh. You know? <laughs> hey, so, man. Them people love their Raiders out there. L.A. loved the Raiders. Yeah, but I, I, that was a different type of cat, though, man. I know this dude used to roll around smelling bad, wearing the jackets, and and I used to walk around. I used to spend my money on stuff like Boucheron and walk around smelling good. And girls would walk up, oh, what do you smell? You smell nice. What is that? Let me come. Let me tell you. Why don't you come over? Let me show you what it's what it is. You know exactly. <laughs> but I was a different type of cat. I mean, because I was always into photography, and I was a little more of an artsy type dude. So I was spend my and camera gear and stuff, you know, expensive shoes and stuff. But, you know. It is what it is. I get it. Yeah. I get it. People have their thing. They want, I mean, because I see sneakerheads nowadays that go and spend thousands of dollars on shoes. And, and I think it's ridiculous. I just can't imagine it. But I think people probably look at me like, I don't think anything about it. If somebody was like, you know, if somebody was like, I think it's crazy that you spend and you know, five, six, eight thousand dollars on camera gear. You know, when you go up, and I'm thinking to myself, that's just what good camera gear costs. But I have the same way about people who buy crazy amounts of shoes like that. So everybody has their thing. Yeah, they do. They do. And um, my man Silverback said Larry was a true player from the play. Uh, damn right, he sure was. What? Well, I'll tell you. Man. I had an older sister, and one of the advantages of having an older sister was, you know, they put you up on game and let you know that you got to have the gift of gab. Forget about having all the other stuff. 
you can have all the shoes and all the other stuff. You have the gift of gab. You can you don't even need all the other crap. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And on that, no, Larry, I'll get no. us out of here. But I want to thank everybody that came to see me, Larry, man. We're so grateful. Um, we're overjoyed that you guys continue to follow our channel as we go through various different transitions. We love your comments. We love feedback. As a matter of fact, if y'all would do us a favor, of course, like, share this though, but go into the comment section of this specific video. Let us know what topics you want us to cover next week. You know, we can be a tag team like Wendy Williams and The Real, but a male version because we love <laughs> talking about these other things. You know, we, we don't want to box in ourselves because our opinions matter, your opinions matter. We can't grow until we get to a consensus on what things can help us. As Shrink and Sharon said, next time, can you talk to us about what you think about the fact that now they think the guy from Atlanta Child Murders was set up? Okay. I had to do my homework on that one, Shrink and Sharon, but you damn yeah, right. Yeah, I had to do my homework on that one, but that sounds like a... That sounds like some serious conspiracy theory stuff, but I have to look that up. Look it up. Put I'll up tell work. you what, though. Go for it. I'm going to throw in my little plug here. Yeah. If you guys are on, go check them out on my Today I Feel Like channel on YouTube. You know, it's a new channel. My old one is, is gone kapoof, so my new one is Today I Feel Like. And uh, go follow. I'm not monetized yet, so I'm still working hard to get to my uh, – my 4,000 watch hours, so I a couple of coins off of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you guys are not subscribed, go subscribe. Check me out. Hit that little subscribe button so you get notified when I release new videos. I usually put out uh, videos about you know, three to five times a week. Just depends on, on what I'm doing. At least three, sometimes more. And uh, so there you go. So for, for if you haven't subscribed to Larry's channel, you're currently watching me. So all you have to do is just get out of this and go to the section of the YouTube channel that says Suggested YouTubers. And I got his name right down there. That's it. Click it. Subscribe to his channel. The brother puts out real good content. Uh, so go check my man out. Y'all been following us today on the Lamont and Larry show. Larry, get out of here. <laughs> all right, you guys. It was good seeing everybody. Thank you guys for popping. And uh, watching, thanks for uh, leaving great comments and, and sharing your thoughts with us. And I'm Larry with Lamont, and uh, thank you guys for coming to see us. And until next time, love, peace, and hair grease. Peace. peace. We'll see y'all next week.